days all along, some things will never change. The lonely loner seems to free his yeah. mind. What's up guys? So people have begun requesting that I make Java tutorials. So here's number one. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get the Java development kit so we can actually make Java programs. So we're going to go to Google and type in JDK and go to Java Sun Developer Network. And when we go there, we're going to see a couple different options. What I'm going to just go over is just the basic Java platform, but you can get extra stuff like uh, JavaFX or Glassfish or NetBeans Bundle. I actually recommend probably getting this one, but I'm just going to go over the standard one. Sorry. And so when we go there, we're going to get this screen, and this is just really basic to download. Uh, choose your platform. You can either use their download manager or you can skip this step or log in to download it and it's just going to pop up with a download, whatever. I guess you actually have to use their download manager if you don't log in. Just kind of get whatever. So once you go have it downloaded, go to where you downloaded it, install it. Really simple. After you do that, we're going to set up the path so we can compile anywhere on our system. Otherwise, we'd have to put in the path to compile every time we wanted to compile a program. So, to do that, we go to Control Panel. Then we're going to go into the system. And it's going to display a bunch of information about our computer. We're going to go to Change Settings into the Advanced tab and change environment variables. And we're going to change the path. And what we're going to do to this is just put in the path to the directory. We just installed the JDK. Mine is 1.6.0 underscore 17. And then after that you do a slash and you type in bin. And that's just the directory where the Java compiler is because Java converts it into bytecode, which is its own um, language, I guess it's computer language, and that's why it's cross-platform, because Java converts it no matter what system it's on, so that's why it can be run on any system. So, good job, we just set up that. So now, we can compile and run our first program and I actually have one pre-made that I will be posting the source to code to and actually going over in the end of this so stay tuned so we need to change to where I have this um, installed and it's in my documents so type in order to save or compile these we need to type java c and then the name of the file we will be compiling. This one is just episode1.java. So it's going to think about it, and then it's going to return back to the prompt, and the blinking slash means it compiled successfully. If it doesn't, then it's going to give you an error, and you'll have to fix that before you can actually compile it. Now, if we hadn't set up the path, we'd have to do c blah 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 blah, blah wherever it's at and then Java C. So we just took care of that by changing those system specs. Now after we have it compiled it's going to make a class file as we can see right here and that is what we need want to run. So we're going to type Java and just episode 1. Sounds like a Star Wars movie. And it's going to execute the code. And it prints out hello. So if I go ahead and open up the source code. Oops. Apparently I can't talk and type at the same time. We have public class episode 1 and Java is case sensitive. So all of these have to match. 
so this had to be capital episode one dot java and when we compiled it, it had to be capital e p i s o d e one otherwise it wouldn't have compiled it's very picky in that regard and then we have a method right here and inside this method we have an execution statement and that's just telling it to print hello which it does so that's it for this congratulations you guys have just compiled and run your first java program